Okay, we'll do a roll call. Uh, Mr. Stembridge? Present. Ms. Wewell? Present. Mr. Valencia? Present. Ms. Terraza? Present. Ms. Panado? Present. Mr. Collins? Present. All right, Mr. Stembridge? Thank you, Madam Chair. We'll begin with the hearing scheduled for 11 a.m. We have first we have case BOA 15364. Uh, Mr. Sanders, I'm sorry. Can, uh, we request any uh, deferral? Uh, yes, we can. <laughs> yes, we can, Javier. Um, as a reminder, we'll ask if there are any requests for withdrawals or deferrals from this time frame. Yes, uh, Mr. Stembridge, good morning. It's Attorney Richard Lenz. I have two matters uh, requesting deferral for. Go right ahead, Attorney Lenz. Sure, the first one is on 98 Bennington Street, uh, 98 100 Bennington Street, uh, requesting a deferral. So those would be for companion cases, being one case BOA 153 5335 with the address of 98 Bennington Street. Along with that, we have case BOA 153 5337, also, also with the address of 98 Bennington Street. Uh, go, go ahead and explain, Attorney Lynn. Thank you, Mr. Stemmers. And uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Richard Lynn's 245 Sumner Street on behalf of the petitioner. Uh, Madam Chair, with respect to this proposal, uh, this is our first request for deferral. Uh, we have reviewed the BPDA recommendation and we understand uh, there is conversations about uh, draft zoning for that neighborhood. We'd like to take a look at what the final decision is for draft zoning uh, before we proceed with this. So we're requesting a deferral for that. Uh, how much time do you think you'll need? Uh, are we looking at January dates right now? Javier? Uh, yes, yes, Richie, that's, that's the dates we're looking at right now. Yep, January would be fine, thank you. Uh, I would suggest January 23rd. I'm not sure of the draft of the neighborhood yet, so I, I think that just to be safe, January 23rd. That's fine. Will that, will that may I have a motion? Motion to defer to January 23rd. 2024, may I have a second? 2024. Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Bedraza. Yes. Ms. Panato. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Chair sure, also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The second one, Mr. Stembridge, is um, a one five Boardman Street. Um, that is an Article eighty that is scheduled for eleven a.m. However, there's a companion case that this goes with at one p.m. Uh, and we're requesting to be heard together at one o'clock. Um, the uh, Boston Planning Development Agency had approved this as one Article 8 project, and we feel in the interest of completeness, it makes the most sense to hear that at 1 p.m. So I'm asking for a deferral to 1 p.m. Uh, for Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Wins. I would agree. Is there a motion? Motion to extend until 1 p.m. PM to 8. Is there a second? <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Barbaraza? Yes. Ms. Panado? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. There are also votes yes. Motion carries. We'll see Thank you very much. <laughs> Hearing no other requests, we will return to case BOA 153 6404 with the address of 21 Wallingford Road. <laughs> Is the applicant and or the representative present to explain to the board? Yes, I am. Oh, go ahead. Okay, please proceed. B Good morning, Madam Chair and all the board members. My name is Frank Williams. I'm currently the owner of 21 Wallingford Road. And uh, Wallingford Road is currently a two family home that I'm looking to convert to a three family. Um, the makeup of, um, of the the property itself is a it's a it's a row house, um, and it's connected to 49 other row houses uh, that make up Leamington, Wallingford, and, and Commonwealth Avenue. Um, the uh, the house has the house has always been used in the past as a three family. Um, there are 
there are uh, two means of egress for, for all three apartments. Um, for some reason, the past owners, uh, I've been the owner of it for a year now, um, and uh, it's currently vacant and it is under construction. And it's been, we had to bring it up to code um, for the city. So the, um, so one of the things I'm looking to do is just really legalize it uh, and, and, and do the necessary things to, to, to bring it into a three family house. Um, I currently have three, three violations that are um, insufficient lot area, insufficient additional lot area and parking. Um, currently the, um, the building does have two parking spaces that are off street that are dedicated to parking. Um, there, it, it is a corner building. Uh, so it does have a yard that's a little, little larger than most for a row house. Um, so we do have outdoor space. There is a patio outdoors for the, um, for the basement apartment, for the lower level um, apartment. And um, all the other apartments will have um, means of uh, deck, decks running off of the fire escape um, so that people are able to, to access um, the rear or the side of the building via, via deck onto a, onto a fire escape. And uh, I think, you know, pretty much that, that really sums it up. It's, it's definitely in a, a transit oriented area. There's the, the B line, the C line and the D line um, that actually are only five to 10 minutes away from this particular property. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Madam Chair, um, the recommendation from the BPDA makes note of um, that the applicant doesn't have existing floor plans uh, showing the three units, but I see the plans in front of me. So I just want to make note of that. Okay, and any Thanks. questions about those plans? No. Okay, uh, with that, may I have public testimony? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Frank Mendoza, all Sprite liaison for the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, for 21 Wallingford Road, we had an abutters meeting on August 22nd um, with uh, very few attendees. Uh, we did record some support based on the applicant's record as a landlord. Um, the Brighton Olson Improvements Association did receive a presentation from this applicant. Their zoning chair, Annabella Gomes, should be on to testify as to their stance. We don't have any letters of support or opposition for this project, and we'd like to defer to the judgment of the board at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mendoza. Uh, no other elected officials, I'll, I'll give it to uh, Allison. Can you briefly um, state your name and address and tell us if you're in support or opposition? Good morning. My name is Allison. Um, I, uh, I own one of the row houses about um, 1757 Commonwealth Avenue. Mm -hmm. I, as it happens, um, Mr. Williams owns each of the uh, of adjoining townhouses on either side of my building and I have found him to be a responsible um, land, responsible and responsive owner. So if there are any concerns that I raised to him about our, the, uh, the shared boundary, he, his, he's always available and um, able to speak with me and we have always resolved things to our mutual satisfaction I'd also like to um, know uh, if uh, Mr. Williams has any thought for um, structuring uh, rent around um, the, the different ratio of um, apartment or dwellings to uh, parking spaces in particular because um, I know he has two, uh, a nice pad for parking for two, and I wonder if he had any thought for offering a different um, rent for someone who doesn't um, have a car or... Um, okay, well, thank, thank you, Ms. Moody. Any other raised hands? Uh, yes, on the panelist side, that was, oh no, that's, that's yeah, a prior well, presenter. Okay. No. Any other any other questions from the board? If you'd like to address that, Mr. Williams, feel free, but that's not within our purview, so 
I, I, I can talk with Allison privately. Offline, thank you. Okay, um, is there a motion? Yes, Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with a proviso that the applicant submits an existing floor plan for the second floor, and if there's any renovations on the second floor, to also submit the new floor plan. To BPDA, okay. To BPDA. Is there, is there a second? Second. second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Ms. Rewell. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Bedeparazzo. Yes. Ms. Panato. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. There are also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck, Mr. Williams. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we have case BOA 1520516 with the address of 36 Ellison Avenue. Is the applicant and or their representative present to explain to the board? Hi, if you're on, can you raise your hand for this proposal? <laughs> okay, someone just raise your hand for a second. Okay, Timothy, I'm gonna make you a panelist. You can just press accept when that pops up and then unmute yourself. Hello. Hello, Mr. Roach. Please proceed. Hello. Um, my name is Timothy Roach, and I'm 36 Ellis and I have me and my wife. Um, we have a variance on the property. Uh, we wanted to extend the uh, back of the house 10 feet and add a deck. But there's a variance on the side of the property that's for six and a half feet. I mean, for 10 feet, and we only have six and a half feet. I think the variance has changed in 1970. Okay. Also, my bill is on this uh, call too. Okay, are there questions from the board? Yes, are you also extending the driveway or not? The driveway? Yes. Yes. We're not extending the driveway. Okay. We're not extending, we're extending the house straight back to the existing house along okay. the existing Thank you. Other questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, may I have public testimony? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board of Everett James of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant for 36 Ellison Ave had an abutters meeting on October 11, 2023. Uh, they met with the Lower Mill Civic Association and the Greater Mattapan Neighborhood Council, both issuing letters of support. Um, We've also received 11 total letters of support, zero letters of opposition. At this time, our office would like to defer our judgment to the board on this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and at the time, I have no additional raised hands. Okay, with that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve. May I have a second? Second. second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Bedbraza? Yes. Ms. Panato? You're on mute, Ms. Panato? Sorry, yes. <laughs> Mr. Collins? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have two companion Article 80 cases. The first is case BOA 153. 6060 with the address of 310 Northern Avenue. Along with that, we have case BOA 1536080 with the address of 5 FID Kennedy Avenue. Is the applicant and or the representative present to explain to the board? Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to say to the applicant, we have like four more Article 80 projects, so please, uh, please do be efficient. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Did you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Thank you, Madam Secretary and members of the board. My name is Danielle Blake, and I'm pleased to, hear, uh, to be here today representing Marcus Partners. We're an affiliate of the project proponent with a business address of 201 Washington Street, Suite 2100 in downtown Boston. Joining me here today is John Sullivan from SGA, the architect of record, and Jeff Howell and Matt Fitzgerald, the project attorneys from DLA. 
Next slide, please. The project consists of two buildings with the addresses of 310 Northern Avenue and 550 Kennedy Avenue. Um, the project site is one parcel measuring approximately 183,000 square feet known as Parcel X in the Raymond L. Flynn Marine Park. The project is located within the General Industrial Subdistrict I-2 of South Boston and is governed by the underlying base provisions of the Boston Zoning Code. But it is also located within a restricted parking overlay district and the coastal flood resilience overlay district. The proposed uses we are discussing here today are permitted by right. However, there are four points of zoning relief we do need, including a variance to allow the FAR requested by the city and approved by the state for this parcel in the Raymond L. Flynn Marine Park Master Plan update. Additionally, a variance from the minimum parapet setback requirement as well as a conditional use permit for the accessory parking garage because it's in a restricted parking district and a conditional use permit for the parking garage within the restricted parking overlay district. Next slide, please. The project site is owned by the Economic Development Industrial Corporation of Boston. It's currently improved by two buildings totaling approximately 72,000 square feet, which is home to the new Boston Seafood Center, pursuant to a ground lease with the EDIC. We have entered into an agreement with the new Boston Seafood Center to acquire that existing ground lease and to relocate two seafood companies located at the property to a new processing facility near the project site. We've also entered into an agreement with the EDIC to acquire and restate the ground lease upon the satisfaction of certain conditions, including permitting. Next slide, please. The project consists of demolishing the existing buildings and constructing two new life science R&D buildings known as 310 Northern and 550 Kennedy Avenue, collectively totaling approximately 742,000 square feet consistent with the master plan update. While the majority of our project will be uh, life science R&D use, we do have the option for our new ground lease with the EDIC to have no more than 3% of our building area as non-destination retail, which is to support the marine park tenants. 310 Northern is the larger of the two buildings at seven stories and approximately 456,000 square feet. Five Fleet Kennedy is six stories and approximately 286,000 square feet. Also uh, excited to say that our site plan includes approximately 50,000 square feet of public realm for public enjoyment by the marine park tenants. We've also uh, identified an area on the site for truck turns associated with our neighbors' intensive loading operations located directly to the west of us at Harpoon and John Nagel. And we're uh, planning for approximately 315 new parking spaces and garages below the buildings. The project was previously subject to review and approval of the BPDA under Article 80 and NEPA review and approval. I'm going to ask John Sullivan from SGA just to quickly describe um, a couple more project uh, details. John? Thanks, Danielle. This is John Sullivan from, uh, from SGA. We're the architect for the, for the project. Um, the, the two sheets that may be the most helpful to talk to would be the site plan um, as, as well as the, the building sections if they're available. Um, you know, d discussing the, the site approach, I, I think kind of the points to make are is that you know, we're very, very responsive to, um, you know, the industrial nature of the neighborhood and what's happening along Seafood Way and Fit Kennedy Avenue and, and have really worked hard to you know, modify our building and to create a streetscapes that is, you know, really respects the, the truck travel and supports those businesses. That said, our public realm, you know, offerings are, are organized more around Northern Avenue and the unnamed access road to the east, uh, where we have a pocket park, uh, a courtyard, and a, and a really nice kind of pedestrian experience for both buildings. Uh, the 310 Northern Avenue is a seven story building that fronts on Northern Avenue. Uh, it is 138 feet in height. It's raised three feet uh, above the above the grade for resiliency purposes, um, and the average uh, or the typical floor to floor height is 14 foot six. Um, the front door is kind of on the on the center of the Northern Avenue block. There's also access from the courtyard. Uh, Five Fit Kennedy Avenue is is similar. It's an L shaped building uh, that that faces Fit Kennedy Avenue uh, at six levels. Um, also raised for resiliency purposes to the same uh, datum um, and also has the same floor to floor heights, uh, but it's a little bit lower in, in total height at 133 feet. Um, so a, a little a little bit about the buildings um, and, and how they sit, how they sit on the site. Again, the upper levels are meant for R&D purposes and there's one level of parking that, that sits beneath both buildings and in the public realm. Danielle? Yeah, and I would just say John was speaking to the um, plans that were part of our refusal package. 
Um, but I'll just end with the project benefits, which, you know, this project is going to provide employment opportunities during construction and upon construction. We're going to provide significant contributions to support the creation of affordable housing and workforce training programs. We're also, um, you know, contributing to the city of Boston tax base and ground re revenue that can be used to help fund millions of dollars in infrastructure needed to support the port uses. We are, we are going to meet the city's net zero carbon targets. As I mentioned, we're protecting the needs of our industrial neighbors who've been operating successfully in the park for years. We're going to contribute over $3 million towards the city's transportation mitigation fund to implement transportation improvement projects identified by the master plan update. And we are investing in a new seafood facility for the sellers who want to continue to grow their business as the new Boston seafood facility that exists today is showing its age and has limitations that are cost prohibited for the sellers to upgrade. Um, that does conclude our presentation. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Have you guys selected a general contractor yet? Uh, we are currently working with John Moriarty and Associates for pre-construction services. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Do you have a, uh, a potential tenant for the life science and research spaces? Oh, we would love to say yes. <laughs> right now, we do not. Okay. Do you know what level, um, what, what type of um, hazardous, if any, or bio? Yeah, sure. So I think, um, you know, we're planning for, you know, biosafety level two. Um, but again, I, I don't know specifically who the tenant's going to be, but. Thank you. Yeah. I see the BPDA hand raised. Are you the project manager, Mr. Polanco? Yes, uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Madam Secretary, Daniel Polanco, project manager of the BPDA. We held a uh, public hearing for this project on uh, November 17th of 2022 and received uh, full board approval for the BPDA. Uh, with this uh, information, Madam Chair, members of the board, I just want to let you know that they did receive full support from our board members. Thank you. Thank you. I see someone from the mayor's office. That's not Connor. Do you want to speak? Hello, Madam Chair, uh, members of the board, Lydia Pulaski with the mayor's office of neighborhood services. Um, 310 uh, Northern Ave by Fid Kennedy Ave was a BPDA project and it went through their committee process as you heard. We have received no letters of support or opposition. Uh, ONS is unaware of any concerns at this time. We would like to defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The <coughs> councillor would like to go on record in support. The pro this project will create approximately 3,400 jobs and help re revitalize the area. The councillor believes that this project will be a valuable addition to the district, and the proponent has conducted a good community process. The councillor respectfully requests that the zoning board um, provide every consideration to this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan for City Council, Lodge Michael Flaherty. Echoing the sentiments of uh, Council President Flynn's office, Council Director Gorick in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the Board of Mine Operators representing the Carpenters Union. On behalf of hundreds of union carpenters that live and work throughout the city of Boston, I want to go on record in support of this project. Thank you. Are there any other raised hands? Yep, I'm sorry. Danielle, are you looking to give testimony here? Your hand She's is the applicant. Oh, yes. applicant. Okay. Um, nope, no additional raised hands. Okay, with that, may I have a motion? I can make a motion to approve. I'm sorry. Second. Uh, Mr. Stembridge? All right. Are you yeah. muted, Mr. Stembridge? Uh, I, I, I was. Mr. Okay. Chair. But again, yeah. Okay, Ms. Rewa. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Better Yes. Ms. Panado. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Chair sure, also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 150 6316. 
with the address of one Morton Place. Is the applicant and or their representative present to explain to the board? Can you raise your hand if you're on for this proposal? Maria Taborada? Taborda? You won't see them on. Then, okay. Um, we can ask. We can ask again, Madam Chair. But uh, the next. A hand was raised, Madam Chair. Okay. Do you see it, Jessica? I don't see um, it. Joe else. as a guest under Joe Consalvo. Joe. Consalvo. Joe. <laughs> Joe, are you on for this proposal? You've been unmuted. Ah, uh, yes, I am muted. Are you here for one Morton place? Yes, and uh, Bob G, the owner, should be on as well. But um, uh, until he uh, joins in. Um, Can you introduce yourself and uh, proceed? He's being transitioned to a panelist, Madam Chair, Thank so he you. can see everything. Excellent. Thank you. Joe, we can hear you now. You're a panelist now. Joe, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. I'm going to try to unmute that from my side as well. But It's not a long meter. He has to, he has to do it on the side. Mr. Consalvo, you can go ahead and unmute on your end. Okay, I unmuted. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So, what, uh, the contractor that was hired is listed as the applicant, but um, abandoned the project without a permit. The building department shut it down. Uh, as a friend of Bob, uh, I stepped in and um, got a survey plan and, an, uh, and the drawings. And uh, as you can see, uh, I'm sorry, sir. Can you also just introduce yourself for the record? Your oh, I'm sorry, uh, Joe Consalvo, uh, Union Construction Inc., uh, 647 Boylston Street, Boston. Thank you. Please proceed. So the the, the dormers were left. Uh, open to the weather in total disrepair. The building department granted him permission to uh, temporarily top them. Uh, and uh, once the applications was, were filed, uh, the refusal letter was issued because of the existing non-conforming uh, zoning of this uh, very small lot. And. Uh, we're just hoping to have the variance granted so I can send in some carpenters to put this house back together. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have public testimony? Also, uh, Bob did speak with the, the local uh, neighborhood groups and uh, they were in support of him cleaning up his uh, property. Thank you, and hopefully we'll hear from ONS on that. Is there anything uh, else? He was Jessica? on 20 minutes ago. I don't know where he went. Uh, Jessica, is there any public testimony? Hi. Hi, I'm Olivia Gomez, uh, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Service. Uh, the applicant met with Eagle Hill Civic Association in October. The group voted unanimously to support the project. Um, at this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Just made him a panelist, so it might take him a second. Hello, Madam Chair, members of the board. Sebastian Fire from Consular Galetta's office. Uh, so, as Melanie mentioned, um, the applicant met with Equal Hill, and the community voted in support unanimously. Uh, and the council has also spoken uh, with the owner of this project. Uh, so, the council would like to go in support of the project. Thank you. Thank you. And I have no additional raised hands. Okay. With that, may I have a motion? I 
Motion, motion to approve. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Bedabraza. Yes. Ms. Panato. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. For the next three cases, um, for the first, first of all those three was deferred until um, January 23rd. And uh, the first, next two, uh, which are companion cases uh, for 98 Bennington Street. And then uh, for one, five, 1 to 5 Boardman Street has been referred until 1 o'clock hour. So with that, we will move on to the read discussions scheduled for 1130. And first we have case BOA 1242680 with the address of 171 Quarry Road. Is the applicant and or their representative present to explain to the board? Yes, thank you. Cameron Merrill on behalf of the applicant. Uh, I believe the designer, Rafi Segal, uh, and owners, uh, Nathan uh, and Nicholas, uh, Nathan uh, Nicholas Corsano, are also on the Zoom, please. Just want to confirm they've been promoted. I've promoted Nicholas, Madam Chair. Please proceed. And is, is Rafi Segal uh, promoted? I'll, I'll promote him right now. Okay, great. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Cameron Merrill, business address 100 State Street, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, this is a project which is uh, at the intersection of Quarry Road and Washington Street. As you leave Brookline and enter Brighton, uh, as you proceed down Washington Street, uh, this project has been a uh, long time coming. It was applied for over uh, a year and a half ago, uh, and there's been a robust community process. Uh, this project is within the Washington Street Neighborhood Shopping District, sub-district, uh, and it is proximate to the Five Washington Project, uh, the Whole Foods Project directly across the street, uh, and the abutting property uphill from this project, which recently uh, burned down, uh, likely will be uh, redeveloped in some fashion in the near future. Uh, so needless to say, this is a, an area of Boston which is currently undergoing a significant transition. Uh, and my clients are artists. Uh, they are award-winning artists with connections to Boston schools and Boston's artist community. And originally they occupied what you can see in that photograph, a cinder block garage, uh, which is presently there uh, as their artist studio. And their dream was to make this somewhere the artists could live uh, and could work uh, and contribute to a robust artist community. Uh, however, as we've all seen in the news lately, there's been a decline in some of those artist opportunities. Uh, and based upon that news and their own personal experiences, they wanted to contribute in a way that could allow that community to flourish uh, with a thriving, pedestrian-focused, artist-focused building. Uh, and that's why we have this project before you today. Uh, after numerous conversations and meetings and groups with the specific associations, uh, this project was reduced from nine to six units. Uh, parking was added to the front of the building, which will be uh, transient parking during the daytime, overnight parking in the evening. Uh, several considerations were made for bar uh, bicycle parking, indoor bicycle parking, uh, indoor storage of uh, trash and refuse. Uh, there were also streetscape improvements that were added, which uh, Rafi will tell you all about, uh, but uh, I, and I think that uh, I don't want to take the words out of the counselor's mouth herself, but I, I do believe we have Councilor Bearden's support for this project. Uh, and in whole, the, the effort here was to match uh, and contribute to the uh, developments which are downhill and across the street uh, without overburdening the community. And we believe that we've done that with this project uh, as it's been designed. Uh, so that being said, uh, if, if Rafi can take over and take you through some of the plans or answer any questions you might have, I think that would be appropriate. Thank you, Cameron. I'm here, uh, but I'm not controlling the slides, so if we can go through the slides, right. 
uh, the existing survey. Uh, right, uh, next slide. Are proposed where we are shortening our lot in order to expand the sidewalk area to match Washington 5. Next. And we'll see in more detail the various iterations that have happened since the, the, the previous submission, which is the additional parking, as Cameron described, two means of egress. Uh, next. Yes. The ground level uh, is primarily devoted, uh, in a way, to public benefits. Uh, commercial space at the front uh, past the two parking lots, which get a 20-foot setback. Uh, bike parking at the entrance, uh, entrance ramp to the, to the entrance of the building, which is uh, ADA compliant, and an art space in the back. Contemporary art space that's used by the artist uh, also for various neighborhood meetings. On the basement level, we, uh, based on comments, we um, enclose the trash and recycling in an enclosed room. Uh, and also there's additional storage in the mechanical room on the basement. Uh, the garden at the back is made accessible and open. Uh, previously, there was a staircase there. We pushed that back. So we're in compliance with a 20-foot setback in the back. Next. So the second floor of the building is all devoted to artist spaces, commercial spaces, and it engages also, as you will see, in the facades with the street. Um, it, this is uh, really part of uh, the design, trying to make the most out of this uh, very problematic and narrow site. Uh, that, so the first two floors are all devoted to the art component uh, and, and the kind of the, the artist units. Uh, the third, fourth, and fifth floor are a combination of different size, of a total of six units, uh, where the fourth and fifth floor have duplex units. Next. Uh, the other component uh, is the facade where we created these setbacks uh, that allow for planters, there's three foot setbacks. So the, the planting is kind of happening within the facade and it's, uh, it's something, you know, that will be enjoyed both by tenants and by, by the neighbors, obviously. But it's a, an attempt to integrate a kind of a green facade into the actual structure of the building. Uh, other changes include the uh, solar panels on the roof. Um, next. And uh, in, uh, towards uh, Corey Road, the kind of the uh, more transparent condition of the two first levels that are artist-based uh, spaces that will allow this kind of engagement. So as Cameron mentioned, the whole area is undergoing a significant transition uh, as a public, as a business kind of district, a neighborhood business district. Uh, and it does need an art component. And uh, this is the art component within the larger kind of urban urban condition. Um, Mr. Siegel, can you can you also talk about the violations and yeah. how, how your project relates to them? Right. So in terms of height, we're matching, we're a bit under Washington 5, which is our neighbor uh, for, in terms of the street uh, facade and street uh, action. It kind of works with that. Uh, you see the kind of uh, situation as of now, which is a, a kind of a, a, a very small shack next to it. So we're matching the height more or less, but we're, we're a bit under. Uh, in terms of the parking, uh, the whole approach here is, is uh, to, to create a project around walkability and pedestrian access and bike access. So we're offering uh, four, 14 bike spots to to park in, uh, and, and two, and maintaining the two existing uh, car parks. But overall, the, the um, you know, connection to mass transit, uh, it's, it's a very walkable neighborhood. It's part of the business uh, sub-district uh, language, you know, to promote, promote walkability and pedestrian access. So that explains the parking. And also, the site is enormously narrow and extremely difficult to create additional parking on it, especially with a, with a rock in the middle of it. Um, the units, uh, you know, we, as Cameron mentioned, we moved to six units and, and three uh, artist commercial spaces. 
these are the main uh, the main points uh, uh, that that we're kind of addressing in terms of, okay. and obviously the FAR, which reflects you know the height and the and the the need for those units to also support the artist space. Are there questions from the board? Are, are you going to leave the existing curb cut? to allow for the, the two, for the two parking spaces to exist? It, well, it, it needs to be redone, obviously, uh, to match the sidewalk okay, along not, Washington Park. Right, you're, you're not gonna no. widen it. You're no, going to no. it as it is. We're not um, widening it. Okay, so um, uh, if, if, the, if the chair can read the BPDA recommendation, that would be great. Approval with provisos that plan be submitted to, to BPDA for design review with attention to adding a setback to the fifth floor and ensuring the design is respectful of the neighborhood context. Okay, so um, I, I just want to make a comment to, um, to the board. Um, it's, it's a very small site. It's very narrow. Um, it's about, right here I'm reading about 32 feet, let's say wide. Um, I don't necessarily understand the, um, the setback of the fifth floor. Um, the building, there, the context, there's really almost no context, um, or there's variations of different typologies in the context. And um, the building next to it is a fairly new construction building, which is a very large, much longer kind of facade. And I can understand why there's a setback um, in that larger mass building on the fifth floor because the facade is so wide. Um, but th this is the only, um, the, the recommendation of the BPDA to set that back, um, I, I don't necessarily agree with, um, but I just wanted to kind of have that as an open conversation to, to the board members. Can, can you go back to the image, the rendered images so that we can see the building next door? Yeah, right. so that's what I was just commenting that that building is very is very large and typically setbacks on the fifth floor. Um, you know, it's just to break down the scale. I don't necessarily understand why it was a comment towards your your project. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just making kind of that as observation urbanistically and then to be respectful of the context. Again, the context is fairly new with the building to the right. Um, so I don't understand why we would be following that new building to the right. Uh, if there's any context, we're looking at really residential kind of topologies around 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 the neighborhood, but it is next to very large ap apartment blocks with flat roofs, um, you know, all the way almost as an extrusion block. Um, so I'm just making some observations for my colleagues. Okay, any other no question? further comment. No further comment. Thank you, Mr. 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 Segal, initially you had uh, nine units. Now you have six, correct? Yes. Can you tell us what are the reasons why you reduced the unit count from, yeah. from nine to six? Yes, yeah, so we, we had a, a robust community discussion and it was in large part based upon uh, the community's desire to have uh, less units, but also to have bigger units. So we did not dramatically just decrease the, the size of the building, but we did uh, allow for uh, certain larger units to include some family style living uh, within this building, uh, which was a direct request from, uh, I believe, uh, the Civic Association and the abutters, as well as the counselor's office. Uh, there's also a space which is going to be retained uh, by this uh, ownership group uh, to be an artist in residence uh, that will be able to present in some of the artist space uh, within this building. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Harry Nunn may have public testimony. Yes, uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Frank Mendoza here, also Brighton liaison from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, for 171 uh, Quarry Hill, we had an abutters meeting on April the 27th. Uh, we had abutters present who had concerns based on density, uh, parking, the overall size of the building, uh, as well as the corner uh, abutting lot. 
we had some non-abutting attendees who did attend and express support based on the creation of art space. Uh, they did present with the Civic Association, the uh, zoning chair of the BAIA could be on to testify to their stance after me. Uh, we have not received any letters of support or opposition for this project, and we would like to defer to the judgment of the board at this time. Thank you. Good afternoon. This is Laura McCray from Councillor Braden's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support of this project. She, appreci she appreciates the um, the proposed use of the project, the arts use, which has been increasingly difficult to find and retain in this neighborhood. Um, she appreciates the current proposed design. Uh, just to add a bit more context, the building that's immediately adjacent, 185 Quarry, which I believe was mentioned briefly, it burned down, but that was a building where there was artist use, um, music studios, dance studios. So this was a art use was is something that has been missed in this neighborhood in this particular neighborhood. So we are really appreciative that this project is bringing that back to this corner of the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Annabella. Madam Chair, members of the board, Annabella Gomes from the Brighton Austin Improvement Association. I'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council Last Michael Flaherty, Council for no record in support. Matthew and then Felicity. Hi, yes, um, I'm a new member of the arts community in Boston and I see space as a premium here, even space availability for the creative sector. And as they've already mentioned above, um, that th they there are losing space and people are attracted to cities not by the office space available but by the arts and cultural scenes and opportunities. This mixed use space is desperately needed in this area. So I, I testimony and support. Thank you. Can we an address? Uh, 50 Green Street uh, in Brookline. Thank you. Felicity? Hello, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Felicity Salmon. I reside at 127 Withington Road in Newton, um, but I work as a freelance musician and an arts administrator in Boston. And I, I can tell you firsthand that we are, yeah, there's a massive need for arts-focused mixed-use developments such as this. And I just wanted to go on record in support of this project. Thank mm -hmm. you. Christian, are you looking to get testimony? Are oh, you unmuted? Be having some connectivity issues. I have no additional raised hands. Okay. Any other questions from the board? With that, may I have a motion? Matt, Madam Chair, I'd like to put a motion forward. This is a very admirable project with much needed commercial spaces for for um, Brighton. I would like to uh, put a motion of approval with a proviso that I'm sorry thank you please proceed <laughs> just with uh, the only proviso that the curb cut um, dimension remains that is not is not uh, remains the same that it's not uh, enlarged yes is there a second Mrs. Stembridge yes Ms. We will. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Bedaparazzo. Yes. Ms. Panato. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. yes. Chair also votes yes. <coughs> Motion carries. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Board. Thank you. Thanks. Next, we have case BOA 119 with the address of 29 Sutherland Road. Is the applicant and or their representative present to explain to the board? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Mark Lacasse, Lacasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston, attorney for the owner of the property, Yehuda Galani. Also <laughs> today is Gary Hendren, who is the project architect. Um, this is a proposed three unit addition to an existing structure at the corner of Englewood and Sutherland Road in Brighton. Um, it is located in the Aberdeen Historic District and much care has been given to making the addition um, not only consistent with the existing structure but compliant with the Aberdeen Historic Guidelines such that we have um, engaged a, an advisory review and made substantial changes to the project as it went through the review process uh, in response to suggestions by Aberdeen Historic staff. 
although we can't go back to them until we had exhausted this process, but uh, wanted the board to know that we've worked closely with them um, because of the historic nature of this area. Um, you'll see on the right hand side of this screen, the blacked out uh, portion in the middle of the screen is the existing parcel. Right next door is a 22 unit building. Across the street is a 26 unit building. And then diagonally across the street, that large um, sort of U-shaped building is a large senior center. So it is definitely clustered around very large multifamily type residential units, even though it is technically in the 3F subdistrict. Um, so again, the proposal is to uh, construct a modest three-story addition on only one side of the building, which you'll see in the elevations that Gary will explain to you. That will change the occupancy from four units to seven units um, and provide three additional dwelling units um, for this property. Back in 2006, this board approved the um, one additional unit changing the occupancy from three to four. So it presently has a legal occupancy of four units as approved by this board in 2006 and pursuant to a certificate of occupancy. Uh, those four units, as you'll see on the floor plans, include two duplex units that have uh, living space in the basement. There were some questions we received during the process about the basement uh, units. They're not units, they're um, living area for the uh, existing units in the building and all were part of the approved uh, unit layout back in 2006. I just was reviewing the Zoning Board of Appeal decision from 2006 and it makes reference to the duplex style units with space in the garden level. So those are existing, no change to those. And with respect to the three-story addition on the one side of the building, which will contain the three new units, there's no, there's no basement space for that. It's slab on grade. Um, importantly also, although we're adding um, square footage and, and footprint to this building, it's a 9,300 square foot lot on a corner. So it has lots of breathing room on all sides. Um, even with the addition, it will have 66% of the lot area will be open. There's a large front lawn, there's a side lawn, there's a side yard area, and there's parking, uh, existing parking in the rear. Again, there's um, six spaces had been previously approved by this board as part of the 2006 decision, and the site plan shows seven spaces for the seven units, which is a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, but again, even with the addition and the existing parking, 66% of the lot area is open space. Um, I think I'll turn it over to Gary to run through the floor plans and show you the proposed elevation on additions. Um, but there it is on the left-hand side of your screen, the proposed three-unit addition. There's a line down the middle, and that is the existing building. And you can see the front area on Sutherland and along Englewood is, remains open and the parking is at the back of the building to be accessed by the existing curb cut on Englewood Ave. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Gary to talk about the floor plans and elevations. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, members of the board, uh, my name is Gary Hendren. It, I'm with Hendren Associates here in uh, Brighton, Alston area. Um, on this particular uh, building, We've, uh, as you will see in the elevations, we've uh, made a lot of effort to match the existing architecture, the line of the roof, the style of the, of the addition. Uh, what we have done uh, is, again, away from the uh, corner of the lot on the proposed three units, that was a uh, three season porch with a deck on top. So we have not taken away uh, from the four units that existed, but we've added the three units. Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, this is the existing site plan, and, and this is the at grade. So the, the first floor, as you can see by the steps in, uh, along Sutherland Road, you come up about a half a level. So the, the darkened, uh, units on the right are existing uh, uh, apartments. The one on the left is the new apartment. Uh, each apartment does have two means of egress. Uh, we've uh, made them adequately sized with large closets. Uh, 
And like I say, we have not exceeded the floor area ratio of the site itself. We do match that by zoning requirements. Next floor, please. Okay, on the, uh, okay, on the, again, the basement, that's an existing uh, basement floor plan. Next slide. And this is the one we just talked about, the uh, two units and the existing building remained. We had one two bedroom unit at the first floor. Next slide. As you go up, um, the on the second floor, we've added another uh, three bedroom unit. Uh, so we've taken over the second means of egress stair was uh, been removed and pushed to the outside of the building. Uh, for access to all the new units. Um, and by doing that, we're able to add a, a bedroom inside of the existing building, uh, which makes the second floor a three bedroom unit. So we have a family unit. On the third floor, uh, through the review process, um, we originally had a larger unit um, but in order to, to maintain the existing roof line, that has been reduced to a one bedroom unit so that part of it's in the overhang. Uh, we can go to the elevations. And that's the existing elevation you can see uh, to the right of the building is that, uh, that porch and with the decks uh, that have been replaced by the units. Next slide. And that's just from the from the rear side, same sort of condition. Uh, next slide, please. I'm afraid you've got the old. <laughs> These are not the current slides because on the front, that roof line, um, as you can see, originally we had a three three decks, but on the right side. That top floor has been made to match the roof line so that buildings do match uh, with the continuation of the architecture. Um, is there a more current set? No, that was the set that we submitted, Gary. But for. That's not, that's not the re resubmittal. But, but for the roof line, everything else remains the same, and that was the design change, right? That's correct. And then we were requested just to. Uh, there was a comment maybe to enclose that rear stair, uh, which is, uh, we're willing to do. That's not a problem. It was originally a, 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 a covered staircase that would become an enclosed staircase. Yeah, and Madam Chair, he's referring to our vote of support that we received from the BAIA included their request uh, that we request a proviso from this board in the event of approval. Um, that the rear access stairway shown here on the elevation be enclosed, and, and we would agree to do that. Uh, the other thing we'd like to mention, we do have 16 letters of support from abutters uh, that they have no opposition uh, to this project. Any questions from the board? Yes. Um, how many parking spaces um, do you currently have? Seven. Seven. So um, there's no change in terms of addition that you're requesting. Right. I, I believe that the maneuverability citation um, is because you can see the configuration shows a tandem arrangement, but the current occupants of this structure largely park sort of along the property line there. Uh, so they're, they're, they rarely implement the tandem arrangement, but the proposed, as shown on the site plan, is the six, you know, three tandem spaces and then that one additional, so seven. So no, no change, no addition to the parking, no additional paving to create parking surface, just status quo. Right, but you were cited for all street, oh, parking, that's right, for mobility. okay. Um, and then is there a reason why you haven't considered an accessible unit on the ground floor? Uh, there is no ground floor. the The first, oh, the first floor, floor of the building, the first floor, is half a level up. Right. Right. Um, but is the for your proposed addition? 
you, you could. Um, we could put a ramp in the front yard, right. maybe, uh, right. to make it uh, an accessible unit. And that's, I can see where that would be feasible. Um, and I can speak to the owner about doing that. So from my standpoint, from an architectural standpoint, it's certainly feasible to do that, given the size of the front porch. Other questions from the board? Um, given the amount of the paving on this site, uh, are you open to doing a, a more permeable surface there for all that paving? And, and is there any landscaping anticipated? There's, uh, there's existing landscaping to remain. We haven't changed the paving at all in terms of the quantity of the asphalt. Uh, again, we could take a proviso to uh, make the, let's say, the parking spaces. We would have to obviously excavate the asphalt and put down permeable pavement uh, to reduce the, the water runoff. So it's certainly feasible to do that. Uh, a little extra construction cost. But the rest of the, there's, unfortunately, the, the photos weren't part of the submission. There's quite a bit of landscaping on the existing lot, as well as a large tree in the front yard. Uh, and all that remains. We're not impacting any of the, let's say, trees. And the footprint is uh, less, about 10 feet larger than the existing porches that are on that side of the house. So. We've taken out a little bit of grass, but not much uh, alteration to the landscape. And, and uh, Ms. Bonata, the lot coverage is going from 28% of lot coverage to 34%. Um, that's with respect to the building, so minor addition. Um, but if you walk by on Sutherland Ave, as you turn that corner onto Englewood, the house, the existing structure is set back nicely, and there's a beautiful front lawn with very mature bushes. This is an old, old structure. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, as a follow up from, from that question, I see that there is a, there is parking on the street and also the green line is uh, is in walking distance. Mm -hmm. So have you considered reducing the number of parking spaces to allow for more um, open space for the new residents? Uh, Mr. Valencia, the you know so the uh, prior decision of this board in 2006 approved six parking spaces for the then four units um, and then as part of you know the community review process of course parking in Austin Brighton is always um, at a premium so the request was for a one-to-one -one ratio so effectively that's just adding one more space without needing to increase the existing paved area of the parcel. It's always, uh, as, as we know and you know, it's a, a give and take, but we're effectively only adding the one space um, for the three additional units. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, may I have public testimony? Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Frank Mendoza here, also Brighton liaison for the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, for 29 Sutherland Road, we hosted an abutters meeting on January the 19th. Uh, it was not very well attended. We had one attendee who was not a direct abutter, um, didn't express any concerns, but did have some questions that the applicant was able to answer. Uh, we did get the 16 letters of support that the applicant spoke about. We haven't gotten any letters of opposition regarding the project, although we did get one letter from uh, a resident of Cleveland Circle concerned about uh, the historic nature of the building and uh, the relevancy of the uh, Aberdeen uh, uh, conservation Design District. Um, beyond that, uh, the Brighton Austin Improvement Association zoning chair should be on to testify to their stance after myself, and we would like to defer to the judgment of the board in this matter at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. This is Mara McCray from Councilor Braden's office. Councilor would like to go on record of support. Uh, go on record in support of this project. She would like to request that, they, that the board consider a proviso that would require some sort of uh, permeable paving uh, for the driveway. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Annabella Gomes from the Brighton Austin Improvement Association. We'd like to go on record in support with the proviso that the second means of egress is enclosed and not open as they have agreed. Thank you. Thank you. 
Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council Lab, Michael Flaherty, let's go right to the support. Okay. Uh, I have no additional raised hands. Thank you. Okay. Uh, with that, may I have a motion? <clears throat> Madam Chair, um, I'll give this a try. <laughs> I would like to put forward a motion of approval with uh, provisals. One, that it that the project undergoes BPDA design review for site planning to review the maneuverability of the parking layout. Um, two, that uh, the applicant um, provides permeable pavement. Three, that the second means of egress is enclosed. And fourth, that there'll be accessibility code review. Is there a second? Second. second. Mr. Stembridge. You're on mute again, sir. <laughs> I apologize, Madam Chair, I'm writing all the provisos, sorry. <laughs> No worries. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Bedebraza? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Chair also votes yes. The motion carries. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Thank you, board. <clears throat> Next, we have two companion cases. First is case BOA. 130-9386 with the address of 75 Maywood Street. Along with that, we have case BOA 153-8154 with the address of 74 to 76 7th Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present to explain to the board? Hi, Fred, are you on? Oh, I see. Hold on. I'm going to make you a panelist. You can just press accept once that pulls up. Okay. And it's going to temporarily mute you. So if you can just unmute yourself again when you become panelist. Thank you. Can you hear us? Yeah, I was muted for a reason, so I think I unmuted myself. You should be able to hear me now. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, members of the board. My name is Fred Manigat. I'm an architect. I've been working with my client, Pitt and Weston, for a while on this project. We were uh, in front of the board, uh, uh, I think, uh, last time, and, and the project's been deferred a couple of times because we needed to to settle this issue with the with the with the uh, with the accompanying lot where we are we are uh, subdividing the lot a little bit just to provide additional parking for the new proposed building, and I guess we'll talk about that 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 uh, application after this one. So this proposal right now that you are seeing is for a six-unit building uh, on on Maywood Street. Uh, this is a lot that is owned by by a by a neighbor who lives on the same street. Um, uh, what we're proposing is, is, is six units where we'll have a small uh, studio unit and in and the, in the, in the ground floor and a, a two bedroom unit on the first floor. Then we'll have, uh, uh, if, if you go to the next slide, we'll see that on the, on the, on the second and third floor, we'll have two, uh, uh, a, two, two bedrooms uh, on, on each one of those floors with two baths. Um, We've been cited by the, by the board for for uh, for, for height restriction, uh, floor area ratio, uh, insuffic insufficient front yard and insufficient side yard. Uh, uh, we we've had meetings with the community. There are, there was a time where we were showing roof decks. Uh, the community did not appreciate that, so we, we removed that. We were we, we were providing fewer parking spaces. We also it changed. To, to, to accommodate the community concern, and we, so we are providing one-to-one uh, -one parking. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the roof height is maybe slightly about a foot or two higher than, the, than, than the, what is uh, the adjacent building where we are providing uh, uh, an architecture that we think complements what's already there. We're providing uh, handicap accessibility on the first floor. 
Uh, we, we're using material that is compatible with the neighborhood buildings. Uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a project that has been on the board for quite a bit. We've had meetings with the community. We had meetings with the, with the uh, neighborhood associations. I think it's all, it's all been well received. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the mayor's office and uh, city council's office have also been briefed on this project. So, so this, is, this is basically what it is. It's a, it's a, it's a six unit building uh uh on an empty lot that has been vacant for quite a bit and uh, um, we're meeting idle and and that will just fill in a missing tooth i feel on the street and uh and and, and, and brings much needed uh, housing uh, for, for the community are there questions from the board Thank you. Oh, um did you consider something smaller that doesn't take up sort of it looks like almost the entirety of the lot, uh, which is now a vacant lot, with with a fair amount of mature trees. Um, and so I'm just curious why such a development that enc encompasses the entire lot. So, so if you know, uh, so the way we, I don't know if this explains it well. Uh, I, uh, on the ground floor, uh, the footprint is small on the ground floor. Then when we get to the second floor, that's when it's elevated. So you, you, you'll, you'll have quite a bit of space underneath the building. If you can see, this, this, this is the extent of the, of the footprint on the actual, on the, on, actually on the ground. Then when, then when you get to the second floor, that's where it's kind of, it can deliver it over to, to allow for the parking. And, 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 and so it will not feel as, as congested as you may, uh, may, you may envision because, uh, uh, the, the actual footprint on the ground itself is smaller than it is. But, but it looks like the remaining area of the lot is all paved. Like there's no uh, yeah. so, significant uh, green space. Yeah. So we, we, we had this competing interest between what we were showing earlier that had a little bit more green space and what, what we're showing right now that has more parking. I mean, we would be willing to, uh, to reduce the number of parking uh, if that was a proviso uh, recommended to us, in order for us to provide more green space, I mean the attempt was trying to uh, to provide one-to-one -one parking. But this is a, this is an area that is in a, in a very well-served uh, public transportation uh, bus line. So we could, I can envision uh, the the owner. Uh, it would be, I think, would be willing to reduce the number of parking and provide more green space on the site. You know, and, and, I mean, I can envision us providing four parking. First come, first serve basis, and and, 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 and using the remaining of the site to both for more green space and, and, and shrubs and, and trees, uh, the like. So this certainly would be uh, acceptable to this kind of Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Can you um, please let us know what is the proposed curb cut uh, dimension, and then the other is. Um, uh, the side yard, um, what's your side yard dimension? Okay, uh, so the curb, cut, the curb cut dimension is going to be uh, the typical curb cut required by BPDA. Uh, we, we don't have a, a, I think we're showing it right now to be uh, a little over 11 feet. But we, uh, we, we, we haven't gone through the water BPDA process yet, but it, it will be it will be uh, uh, it will be adequate, I, I believe, uh, uh, for, for for the cars to go in and, 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 and come out. It will be a new curb cut that will meet that will meet um, zoning. And I'm trying to look up the the side yard right now. I think no, it's side... just because your dimension. You're not the site plan is not dimensioned at all. Okay, I mean I can. I can figure it out very quickly if you should. Looks like you have a ramp very close to the property, if I'm reading that correctly on the site plan. Yeah, I have a, I have a ramp on the, if you're facing the building on the right side of it, you, you'll, you'll see a ramp. Uh, that, was, that, was a, uh, that was a request after meeting with, uh, with the community and also with, with, uh, with, with, the, with the city we, uh, plan with that, uh, that that we provide uh, Handicaps uh, parking uh, uh, and I'm not talking a handicap accessible unit. So we, that's that's why we, we decided to add that uh, that ramp on the side. Right, but if you look at the site plan and let's say you have an accessible 
um, parking space, you can't even get to think, the accessible ramp. I don't think my site is being shown. Is there a way to show my, I'm looking at, look at the different site being shown. You, you cannot share, so you can just tell. No, no, I'm saying that what I'm seeing here is not mine. Yeah. So if, if yep, that's the correct. That's term. the that's the correct one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so if you can if you can see here if you can yeah. see here that that ramp it's not even um, positioned where you can get from an accessible parking space. Oh, uh, access back to it. No, I I I think I think you 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 would be able to. I think I, what I'm what, what I have a five foot. I will have, I've designed it to have a five foot radius in front of the ramp from the parking from the parking space. I think you may be concerned a little bit about the stairs encroaching a little bit, which I think we can we can modify to make sure that that's that's a matter of me, making sure it meets code. I, I I think we can make that work. Okay. I, 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 so I, 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 you I, you don't I, have I, adequate drawings to convince me <laughs> that it can work, but that's okay. That I don't no, have yeah, any other questions. We will make it work. Yeah. But I see you're amenable. Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, amenable. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? I have a question, Madam Chair, this is for yes. the applicant. So this was deferred from a board meeting in September. Can you sort of give a higher level overview of what has changed since that meeting within the plans? Yeah, so the, the reason it was deferred, um, uh, if it, was, uh, it wasn't made because of the plan mainly. The, the reason it was deferred is because we needed to have an accompanying application for, for Savage Street where we are doing the subdivision. Because by subdividing the land where we are taking part of the Savage Street lot in order to, to provide the parking space for Maywood, that also triggered a, a zoning violation for the existing lot. So they wanted us to also uh, address that at the same time. So, so it was deferred for that reason. So just okay. to confirm, there are no actual changes to your plan. That's, that was her main question. No, there are no actual changes. Thank you. No. Okay. So, and at, okay. that, at that time, did you were you privy to the BPDA recommendation and the feedback from the BPDA? I don't think this has gone to the BPDA yet. Well, we we have a recommendation um, for for the board, and it sort of which is public. Yeah, and it um, recommends a denial based on a number of um, items. So I just wasn't sure if you had seen that and had taken that feedback into account before coming back. Um, I'm happy to read it if anyone. Yeah, I think you read it. Um, so they recommended denial without prejudice. The proponent should explore a proposal that narrows the structure's massing to meet the area's side yard requirement. Updates should also relocate the proposed driveway off of the side lot line and significantly reduce the amount of paving on the site to retain the site's landscape and existing trees and provide adequate screening and buffering along the site's side and rear lot lines. Thank you. With that, let's take public testimony. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office likes to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process. Um, at a butters meeting was held, I don't have a lot of information on that due to personnel changes, but I understand there were concerns expressed with uh, the upkeep of the uh, adjacent property. Uh, the applicant went on to meet several times with uh, the Civic Association in that area. Um, project right in the 9th Street United Neighborhood Association uh, decided on supporting this project on the condition that they not, do not include a roof deck as part of the proposal. Um, with that, we'll defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> One second. You got a re okay, Mike Kozu. Michael Kozu, 320, letter A, Blue Avenue, Project Right. Uh, we have been working with the home of uh, the property owner uh, who actually lives in the neighborhood. The property that we were concerned about was a problem property from someone else. This neighbor, this uh, applicant has been very helpful in addressing the problem property, uh, working with us uh, to work with um, the city addressing the other proper problem property that's not, not, that's not his. Uh, people felt that this property would be of uh, value. We will continue to work um, 
with the property owner in terms of making any adjustments that's needed. We appreciate them um, addressing the lack of the removal of the roof deck. Also, we were concerned about, neighbors were concerned about the lack of off-street parking. Uh, so they accommodated that. We are willing to work uh, in terms of further uh, re, uh, design re review, uh, but we are uh, conditionally supporting this project. And I have no additional raised hands at the moment. Thank you. Any other follow-up questions from the board? With that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I like to, um, I think the density is good at the site. I like to support this project and put forth a motion of approval with BPDA design review as it relates to the massing of the building, the location of the building, um, the site plan, um, landscaping to maintain existing trees and to promote um, a uh, permeable uh, surface and lastly to review the total amount of parking to allow for open space is there a second a second that mr stembridge yes ms Wewell. Uh, yes mr valencia Yes. Ms. Bedabraza? Yes. Ms. Panado? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 1459061 with the address of 74 Horror Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present to explain to the board? Yes, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Richard Lenz, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner. With me is Hannah Kwan and her husband, Jason Krupp. Also, we have Eric Zacherson, who's the project architect. Um, Madam Chair, we can jump down to slide five. That's probably a good place to start. Uh, our proposal involves the demolition of an existing uh, two-family structure and we are proposing to replace that now with a five-unit structure with five garage parking spaces um, we were before the board and we did request a deferral uh, previously uh, based upon the bpda's recommendation and an opportunity took an opportunity to try to address a number of those comments uh, as stated this is now a five-unit proposal i know the public notice at six we did reduce that to five uh, with five parking spaces uh, if we can jump down uh, perhaps to slide eight, it'll give us a little bit different perspective as well. That's uh, a good place to stop. So our building is here on the right-hand side next to the uh, blue, uh, looks like about a three and a half story building. Uh, and that would be uh, demolished. It does sit on a 5,000 square foot site, which is currently uh, situated in the 2F2000 zoning district. Um, under current zoning, Madam Chair, this lot could conceivably be subdivided and uh, two two-unit dwellings could be uh, constructed as a matter of right. Uh, however, I think it's important for context, including the past recommendation of the BPDA to consider uh, new zoning that is likely being uh, implemented for this area. Uh, this site, if we want to jump to the next slide, uh, for our rendering, sure, perfect. Uh, so this site uh, is being um, uh, targeted for what we call EBR2, uh, which would allow for a number of different uh, zoning regulations that currently exist here in the 2F2000. Uh, right now, under Article 53, uh, the FAR for this site uh, would be in excess of the allowable limit, which is uh, 1.0. Uh, we're proposing 1.43 and require a variance for that. In addition, the design of uh, uh, buildings in the 2F2000 district uh, would be two and a half stories. Uh, there are a number of examples of three and taller buildings in this section of East Boston, yeah. but I think it's significant that EBR2 uh, will allow for a three-story building under new zoning. Uh, more importantly, EBR2 will not have an FAR uh, requirement. Rather, uh, it looks to issues like permeable surfaces and more open space. Uh, and that's precisely what we did, Madam Chair, when we addressed the comments and concerns of the BPDA uh, since the last deferral. If we want to jump down to the site plan um, at slide 11, that probably would be helpful uh, to talk about that. Um, so as we're going to that. Uh, we can see the layout of the building here. We do set the building back about a little over 21 feet in the rear yard, and that is an increase from the original proposal. 
Uh, by doing that uh, and looking at our overall site plan, our permeable space on the site is at about 37%. I believe under new zoning, the goal is to be at least 30%, so we are in excess of what the minimum required would be for permeable surface. Uh, more importantly, we ensured that we kept the parking in the garage so that we did have additional pavement in the rear. Uh, there was an opportunity to try to create some parking in the back of the building, uh, and that was something that uh, we certainly wanted to avoid in order to ensure as much permeable space as possible. Uh, if we want to jump down to the next slide, please. Uh, it shows the first level uh, with our parking garage, and again, one of the things that we did here in the original recommendation was the six parking spaces were a little bit snug uh, and did have some effect on maneuverability. I know that was originally cited. Uh, by offering and changing this around to uh, five parking spaces, we do checkerboard the garage, which is a, a method that we have used previously, uh, and the maneuverability based upon both compact size and regular size vehicles uh, should be less of an issue. More importantly, uh, there is an existing curb cut on the site that is in excess of 10 feet. We would be reducing that down to the residential width of 10 feet as well. Um, real quickly, I can jump through the floor plans. I'm going to jump to slide 13, and I'll just talk quickly about those. So at level one, we do have the garage parking uh, as well as an accessible unit, which is the two-bed, two-bath at grade. Uh, we show uh, four other units on the upper levels, and those are all family size, three-bed, two-bath units. Uh, ranging anywhere from about 1,100 square feet up to around 1,400 square feet. Uh, the reason we incorporated the number of three bedroom units is this particular neighborhood uh, has been pretty sensitive to uh, asking for family size units, uh, and we wanted to ensure that we were addressing those comments and concerns. So with the reduction uh, down to five units, we did uh, have the ability with some of the floor space, space to create uh, some of that uh, additional space. Last, I would point out uh, for the flat roof, uh, we don't propose a roof deck. Uh, that was something that was contemplated early on in the process, but we've eliminated that as well. Um, I will pause there. I know that there may be some questions regarding uh, the design and layout, some of the changes, but uh, we'll pause and uh, ask for any questions from the board. Thank you, Mr. Lins. Any questions from the board? Is this a rental project or? This is intended for home ownership, so these would be uh, individually sold as condos. Okay. okay. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, I'll take public testimony. Malavia Gomez from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Service. Um, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. ONS hosted an abutters meeting for this project on February, 7th, February 16th, 2023. Uh, on this call, a resident at 79 Horace expressed concerns about the timeline of the project and about parking. Two residents on the call expressed full support for the project, while another resident suggested that the project be four units and six parking spaces, and expressed concern that was coming from neighbors on Bennington Street about the height. Uh, but overall, this resident liked the design. Another abutter suggested that the height was fine and design was okay. Uh, furthermore, the applicant met with Harborview Neighborhood Association in May. The group voted to oppose the project with a vote of 21 to 7. ONS also received a packet of support with 28 letters of support from abutters and neighbors that was hoarded to the board. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Sebastian Parra from Cosford Coletta's office. And so, there is lack of support uh, from Harvard Neighborhood Association with their voting opposition to this project. Additionally, we have received numerous uh, emails from people in the community and about others in, opposed to this pro in opposition to this project. And lastly, the project does not seem to be in conjunction with the plaintiff's Boston proposals that are putting uh, forward. Uh, so for all of these reasons, the council would like to go in opposition of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, any other elected officials? Um, if not, I'll go to Robert and then Brian. Can you state your name and address and briefly tell us if you're in support or opposition? Yes, hi, um, my name is Robert Adams. I am a direct abutter. I am at 70 Horace Street. Um, I am opposed to this project uh, primarily because as a member of the Harborview group, we did vote no for this project. We have concerns about the overall height, and many of us in this community have been working very hard with the BPDA about Plan East Boston, 
And so the maps that are currently being drawn are saying that a project like this would be too high. And so we do feel that be the case. And many of us are concerned that, you know, if we continue forward with this, we're still committing the sins of the past. And we would like with the plan East Boston to try to prevent those from happening. And this is just something that we are just opposed to primarily on the high base. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> Michelle. I'm sorry, Brian. Hi, hi, I'm Brian Chilton. I am um, on the property directly behind this at uh, 595 Bennington. And um, we're, we're landlords and we take great pains to um, not overpopulate our units. We take less rent because we try to be good neighbors. And so this kind of flies in the face of what our efforts are in the sense of um, increased density in the area. Um, as far as requiring variances, I have some experience with this. And I don't understand why the property would be considered for variance based on my understanding of what the requirements are for that. Um, and I echo Mr. Adams' uh, previous comments that it's, a, I think, a terrible precedent for Horace Street moving from two family development to um, five because you're just going to find developers you know buying multiple properties combining them into increased density um, um, thank you okay michelle hi i'm michelle um, i live at 78 horace street i'm a direct abutter for this this project and i'm in complete support of it for multiple reasons one being that I'm a lifelong East Boston resident and I love the, you know, the change that East Boston is going through and I think that this is well planned out. I think that the parking isn't going to be an issue. I love that, you know, we have them in the building. Um, I think that building at this very moment is an eyesore and I think that just by putting, you know, developing this project, the value of the street in general is going to absolutely go up. Um, I'm not concerned about the height. I don't think it's going to you know, ruin anyone's view. There's, our houses are very spaced out as it is. And um, going forward, I'd love to see this, this happen to East Boston and particularly Horace. It's a beautiful street to begin with and I'd love for something like that to go up. I think it's it's great, absolutely. Thanks, er, Anani? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Renani Diarujo at uh, 68A-68B uh, Horace Street also direct abutters to the uh, project. Um, very much in support of this project. Um, as, as you know, our neighborhood, our community is in desperate need of new homes. Um, this is appropriate for uh, a 5,000 square foot lot. Uh, we supported uh, six new homes for families. Uh, I think the, it seems the developer is uh, brought it down to five, but still very much in support of that. Um, we have uh, tenants on our first floor looking to purchase a home impossible in our community. Uh, we have other friends and family looking to rent, also impossible in our community uh, because of lack of supply. Uh, we could have five new homes for families uh, you know, online this time next year. Uh, also uh, very much consistent with uh, at least the comments and feedback we've had for, um, uh, for, for Plan East Boston uh, for this specific area of East Boston. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Nicholas. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Nicholas Parsegian, 121 Harv Street, East Boston. I'm in support of the project in a time where there's a desperate need for additional housing stock in the city. I think this is a well-designed and thoughtful uh, approach to adding additional units of housing. And I think it would be a great addition to the East Boston community. Thank you. Thanks. And then Colby, last raised hand. Hi, I am uh, Colby Mazzarella, 15 Horace Street, and I support the project because it's not very dense by the amount of the size of the lot, and um, it takes care of the parking, and the actual height is not out of line for the height of the other buildings. Thank you. Thank you. No additional hands. Okay. Madam Chair, may I respond very briefly? Yes, sir. And it goes to the heart of, I believe, the vote of the association. The issue on height, um, I, I don't want it to be confused on the board. The current height allowable in the district is 35 feet. The height issue uh, under the current zoning is that two and a half stories is permitted. This would be considered three story, but 35 feet is still the maximum height limit. 
Um, with respect to Plan East Boston, uh, EVR2 actually would allow three stories by right and would eliminate the requirement for an FAR uh, variant. So uh, we are, and we attempted to align this project more with the Plan East Boston than the current Article 53, which is uh, in effect, uh, I would assume, until, uh, until the Zoning Commission decides on the new article. But we are heading in that direction. And that's why we designed the building the way we did. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve this with DPDA design review and special attention to the parking and maneuverability. Is there a second? Second. second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Benabraza? Yes. Ms. Pinado? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. There also votes yes. The motion carries. Thank you very much. And it looks like we are on break again until 1 o'clock. See you all then.